Welcome to our very first seminar on security. Uh, we are going to try to bring you the news on security, what happened during the last couple of weeks, and more importantly, our take. Uh, today we have here Uge, uh, Sevel CEO. Happy to be here. And over time we'll be bringing other people from Seminal, some external guests. Uh, feel free to tell us who you want to be here with us. Uh, you may want to use the hashtag Seminal Security to let us know if you like this thing, what are the things that we should be doing, people that we should be bringing, etc., etc., etc. We will try to do this every now and then, hopefully every couple of weeks, uh, TBD. That's why we really need to know what you think about this, right? So, Uge, what do we go directly into the what happened during this last couple of weeks? Sure. So, I wanted to get your take on uh, the recent announcements from GitHub. Mm -hmm. uh, so, they made several announcements relating to uh, uh, security. Uh, they acquired Dependabot, which automatically fixes mm -hmm. uh, our dependencies on vulnerable components. Um, they also announced this idea of private reports, so you can more easily uh, report a uh, vulnerability to an open source project. Clearly. That, that's a big win. Um, good job, uh, GitHub. I, I think a uh, couple of things that they announced, they, the private uh, reports, some uh, private posts and everything, it's a huge step because when, when I was uh, reporting vulnerabilities on my time in Google, we had this problem around who do we report to? Who is behind this mailing list? Is this 200 people that essentially were leaking the vulnerability mm -hmm. or not, right? So great, great job. Uh, and the same thing with fixes. Yeah. Um, the, the fact that you can now make private pull requests where you uh, privately first discuss what, uh, uh, what the right fix is. What about the sponsors? Sponsors are also interesting. I, I'd love to see a way of uh, sponsoring uh, our security work, so perhaps sponsoring pen pass. I, I think that's going to be the next step. Uh, right now, I think only they allow uh, non-companies, essential people, to sponsor. Mm -hmm. But at some moment, it would be great that they open this to companies, and they open it to, I want to sponsor for this particular thing. That could be, hey, uh, FFmpeg security review, rather than some money to FFM pack, you do whatever you want. So, so basically, you put something in a, 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 a bounty pot fund uh, for that particular product. Correct, correct. That'd be great. Oh, great job, GitHub. Please continue. Uh, this links very, very nicely into this open security that we have been talking lately, right? Mm. What about the uh, other things? Uh, have you heard about Bluekip, the RDP? Uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty scary, huh? Yeah, so essentially, it is a remote pre-authentication vulnerability on the RDP protocol, which means that it's wormable, right? So like uh, WannaCry? Like WannaCry, like the 2000-2001 SQL worms, right? It so, is, so is it already out there? Uh, there as bad as WannaCry? Uh, I haven't seen any public exploit on this one. There has been POCs, but someone was looking into the exposure of the internet to this vulnerability, and they found one million devices with vulnerable versions. That's unbelievable. All yeah. those people are not updating. No. And, and, and that, that is for sure the mitigation. I mean, yeah. that's the only sensible thing. And let do. me tell you something. When the, even the NSA makes a public announcement, please patch, it is this serious. Yeah. But you know, you know what my take on this one is that it is serious, but over the years, not only Microsoft, all other players in the field, they have been investing in security mitigations to make exploitation harder. I want to see if out of this vulnerability, they convert it into an info leak to bypass all this ASLR remotely. That's yep. going to be the key factor mm -hmm. here. Uh, other things that happen. Uh, yeah, so CPU works were once again into the spotlight, right? I thought that Spectre and Meltdown were kind of one offs. I mean, this is a once in a lifetime yeah. uh, result. But uh, uh, yet another one, Zombie Lab. Yet another one. And I think this, this trend clearly tells us that there is a vulnerability class here in CPU bugs. Uh, you know, usually these CPU bugs, they let you read information from other processes. Those other processes could have passwords, tokens, cookies, other things. Uh, this is relevant in the cloud model where your code is running at, along other customers' uh, code. But it's also very relevant whenever you browse the internet because essentially whenever you browse the internet, you're running code as JavaScript. And in the past, they exploited Milton and Spectre through JavaScript, reading secrets from your laptop or your uh, device uh, just by browsing a website. Yeah. Very, very relevant. You, you know what's the mitigation? 
just just turn off hyperthreading. Turn off hyperthreading. And, you know and so you so you will need to pay. You want to be secure, or you're going to be up to nineteen percent slow. Nineteen percent. I mean, that's quite serious. So there are different approaches. Some vendors they disable this. Chrome OS they disable it. Apple, I think they are giving it to the user. Do you want the security or do you want the performance? But, this, but that's that, that's unfair because not everyone is in a position to make that judgment. Yeah. And so people might think it's it's better to have a nice quick uh, quick laptop. Um, well, they don't know what they're exposing yeah. themselves to. Yeah. So is this going to be the last one? I would bet money that it's not. Quick thing: it only affects Intel. It doesn't affect ARM, AMD, or any others. So. Uh, I'm not sure what is the plan on Intel. Maybe they can patch it as a part of a microcode update. Maybe not. Could be a design thing that they will not be able to patch. We don't know yet. Um, other things that happen. Uh, Nginx, uh, two remote code execution bugs. Nginx, this popular web browser, right? So apparently, these vulnerabilities are in, uh, in the scripting language. You upload something over there. And um, it is unclear to me uh, the attack vector. Do you need to provide an untrusted script, or do you need to find a script that lets you pass to these vulnerable functions uh, the untrusted input, right? So there has been a little bit of Twitter drama about exploitability. Let's see what we uh, a bug comes. is a bug. Right? A bug no, is a so, bug, right? So did you know how they find it? I don't. I read on Twitter about this uh, lady finding it, but I don't think. She disclosed how, but you know the interesting part is that other people use this as a C vulnerability, thinking I mean they, they are thinking more in the lines of this is a nice area to look into. They started fussing it, and they found tons of other things. Interesting, very internal as always for us. You know who is doing also do this? Uh, OSS Fast, which is another company that I really like on mm -hmm. this open security thing. Totally. Um, other things that happen, uh, Exim, Exim. Yeah, so that's a popular open source SMTP server. Um, and uh, it's kind of a case study in the disclosure process going wrong. Uh, it was under embargo, and they said that uh, they announced it uh, on uh, uh, the 11th of June, uh, but then someone leaked. So, yeah, an embargo that uh, was broken, right? Uh, there's always this discussion about embargoes. Yes, no, I'm not going to get into there. But this one didn't work. There was a leak, and recently that someone published the details, and they were forced to exim and all the distros to make the public announcement. So apparently, this is an interesting one. It's not the default configuration. You need to compile exim with some kind of flags, and then you're vulnerable. So maybe it's not the end okay. of the world, but please go patch. Right? As always. Other things? Do I make the, not, no. the joke or not? Okay. <laughs> make your joke. Okay. A note, pat, <laughs> note pat. Right, unbelievable. I mean, this is just a tech setup, right? I mean, how, how can you have a, a, a code execution bug in a tech setup? Let, let, let's give some credit. Tavis Armandi, our friend from Project Serial, he found uh, something we don't know because it's not public on Notepad. And he published on Twitter uh, a screenshot of a cal.exe popping up from the Notepad process. Only Tavis. Uh, only Tavis, right? right. So, you could assume that Notepad is not parsing that one. I mean, how difficult it is to parse text? Yeah, you would have thought, but then but, but it was a similar problem with Vim, right? Oh, yeah, it's the week of vulnerabilities in editors, right? So, <laughs> uh, uh, that, that one hurts, but especially I've been using Vim for years. I guess. Are you patched? Let, right. let me send you this thing. Oh, whoa, 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 don't, don't. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I want to open any files from you. Okay, good, good, yeah. yeah. You should patch, I mean, should patch. I mean, apparently it's a week of vulnerabilities in editor. So, other things that happen is this this person, Sandbox Escaper, goes by this handle. We don't know if it's a he or she. Uh, has been dropping on GitHub zero days local privilege escalations for Windows 10. Um, so, just new exploits so we don't know the intention but it happens. it's very weird i mean just just publishing these these things yeah without any further so windows 10 local privilege escalation is very useful for sandbox escapes for other things apparently it affects the task scheduler the error log manager or something like that i don't think there are fixes so far i don't maybe uh, I, 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 don't, I don't think so it's totally irresponsible yeah people really shouldn't do such things yeah well, this was all for Seminal Security, number one. Uh, let us know if you like this. Uh, let us know who you, who, what we should be talking about. 
who you like to be here with me, maybe a short interview and then some news on security, uh, use the hashtag Semadon Security and please subscribe here. Here? Here. Here. There. 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 Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Uge, for your time uh, today. It's a pleasure. Thank and you I very want much. to thank for the audience, uh, whoever you are. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye.